Hey everybody, this is Bruce with Lebowski Studio. I'm out today, I'm going to visit a friend in Augusta, Maine. It's about 20 miles from where I live. And my plan is to get there, I'm trying to get there a little early to do a painting over by the river. Uh, there's a little uh, farmer's market area, big parking lot. During the summer they use it uh, for the farmer's market and such. So I think that'll be a good spot to park. And when I was driving by there the other day, it looked like it would be interesting for shapes and design because you have the uh, broken up ice and some open water. So a combination of that. And today it's uh, fog in and out. I think mostly it's supposed to clear up later, but I think near the water we're going to get some nice uh, atmospheric effects that'll be interesting to paint. So we're going to see what I can get into. I'm hoping to do something kind of large, 9 by 12 or bigger. I want to practice trying to do more larger format pieces uh, in, you know, out on location, plain air, to uh, get my techniques down and how, my painting language on how I would handle those. So I'll get back to you. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Okay, I'm going to check out to a view over here at this little point that sticks out by the river and see what we get for a view. That little island right there is what I'm, I was interested in. And I think uh, this vantage point I'm coming up on might be a, a nice uh, depiction of it. I'm not sure. I'm gonna look around for a few minutes rather than just jump into something. We also have the nice greenish sort of coloring there in the snow. Very pleasant out today. It's about, I don't know, 35. Feels kind of warm. And here's the view this way. So there's some potential. This, of course, with the lead-in of the wall. If you paint that, leave the fence out maybe, or simplify the fence, I don't know. Uh. Okay, the palette I'm going to be using is titanium white, ultramarine blue, new color for me, transparent yellow oxide, and cad red. And we'll try that out and see what happens. Okay, just want to show you my little setup there. I got my little lightweight tripod for the camera, of course. My Canon Elf I'll be filming with. And here's my little setup. And I'm going to be painting composition over here with the little island. Try to get that swooping effect. And I think I might leave out the bridge. I'm not sure yet. I want to make, you know, I'll decide that as I'm painting. Um, you could put a little, as you can see, a few trucks and stuff driving across. But I think I might make it more of a nature thing. I'll decide later. But this is my setup. Now we're going to get filming. And uh, I'm just going to concentrate on painting. And uh, I'll do voiceover probably in the studio. There might be parts of real-time commentary. I don't know yet, but it's going to be nice painting because it's flat gray right now, so I'll have plenty of time. So let me get started. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? This painting was a lot of fun. Number one, it was not too cold out at all. It was great weather for uh, painting outdoors. And uh, as you can see, I'm doing my usual blocking in with one tone of uh, color. Pretty much my us usual operation when I'm uh, painting. I do try different techniques, as you've seen me do in the past, but typically it's this method. And I'm not really looking for a lot of detailed information at the moment because uh, I want to nail the kind of bigger lines of the composition. I have a viewfinder catcher, view catcher. A uh, little device that I have in my backpack and I keep saying I'm going to use it but I tend to just jump in and find a composition because when I see a view I kind of really have a sense of what I want to hone in on but uh, they are a handy device to use I have uh, used them once or twice in the past and I just need to quit being lazy about it uh, so as I was blocking it out I kind of just uh, Guesstimate a quick little center point for the panel just to make sure I didn't put certain elements in a weird spot in the composition. And as you can see, when I panned around in the original uh, previous shot of just panning around, showing where I was at, there's a uh, where I'm painting right now in, in the painting here. There's, of course, a bridge crossing the river. And I just did not want to put that in there. Uh, compositionally, it would have been a little distracting. And also for the mood of the piece, I want it to be something kind of timeless. Like uh, 
just, you know, you could see this scene in the 1800s or now in 2018. So uh, that kind of effect. And like I mentioned before, what uh, the palette I use, that transparent yellow oxides, kind of really cool. I kind of really like using that quite a bit. It really, uh, when I actually was working on the sky like I am now, I added just a bit of it to my blue mixture just to neutralize a bit uh, the blue and to have just a very, very, very pale kind of a greenish gray effect to it. It's uh, a nice, nice touch. You can see how I'm dancing around, putting little blocks of color here and there. I admire people that can finish one part of the painting, just move on down to different elements. But I just have a habit of uh, putting in patches here and there to then, as it's starting to develop, I can see relationships between those patches. I think that's important. And that tree batch of trees on the on the left there uh, is it going to be a nice effect later on when I cut back around, getting some warm tones in the background. Even if I didn't see, I, there were some warm warm tones back there, but even if I didn't see them in areas where I thought they were needed, it would still be believable. And I really highly recommend you uh, think about that in terms of design to pull different colors to different parts of the painting if needed. And you can see how I, I mix, how I hold my brush to apply the paint. Sometimes I hold it more like a pencil, other times uh, from the side, sort of like I'm taking a knife and buttering the painting. And I actually favor that a lot, especially in the block-in stage of the painting. I just like the way it scumbles the paint on, especially on the uh, panel surface. Now here I'm getting an overall sense. I can see, I can remember this day very well. I was really getting excited that, man, this thing's going to pop. This is really going to be a nice one. And I was trying not to get too crazy too fast. I didn't want to ruin that effect. So I was really trying to slow down, take my time, make sure I'm following the ideas I want to, uh, to follow, which is trying to get some bigger color shapes in and then nuance detail into those later on. So here I am with that idea doing a mid value tone for that reflection on the right, on the uh, left, uh, finding a happy medium, even though there's differences in it, it gives a nice base. Don't worry about like the foreground uh, suggestion of the tree there. I'm kind of painting over a bit. It still is going to show through a bit. What's going to be nice is when I lay the strokes of tree trunk on it later, that, that paint underneath is going to be slightly wet and will give a more integrated look to the limbs of the tree, even though they, they might be stronger in uh, edges and stuff because it's slightly going to be mixed. So it doesn't look pasted on. Now, reflections can be difficult. You can see how I'm doing a technique here to give some horizontal element to show water, the flatness of the water. But then I'll go back in later and, and nuance the edges of the reflections. Getting some uh, little different value in the sky. I tend to have a habit too, like uh, as the painting's kind of shaping up, if I can get a light value, a mid value, and a dark in the painting as fast as possible, I'll know if that uh, painting structure is going to work, that value structure in a painting. And then I can go and break up those values as in, in as many steps as I want. So uh, that's something to think about that might be useful. Really have to, helps you capture a scene quickly. Shaping up some of the trees here. When I do the shaping, I try to plant strokes, don't noodle around too much, and then you can go back and finesse the edges. So uh, something to pay attention to. And as the clouds are changing, your, sometimes your skies are going to be moving in and out. You just have to kind of pick 
the general elements and some interesting aspects of that particular moment uh, of uh, the weather condition and give the feeling of the sky. You try to start chasing clouds, then you're really going to run into trouble. And sometimes, even if they're more stationary, you may not want a certain darkness to some of the clouds, so you'll lighten them a little bit. Uh, so you can take some liberties. Creating that distant landmass, really kind of starting to send you to the back now. Now this was the fun part. Started getting some of these nice grays going on, and then popping in some more chromatically intense color really starts to uh, make the painting sing. And I'm starting to really love, I've done it in a couple paintings now, painting on this white panel that I've toned with Mars Black, with some, you know, toned with some uh, a wash of Mars Black, wiped off the excess, and you end up with that nice neutral gray. I used to sometimes experiment with ivory black for the same purpose, but I just thought it was a little too blue. In the end, so I uh, tried the Mars. Really liked the effect. I think I'm going to stick for, uh, stick with that for a while, even in my studio painting. Now, just kind of looking out and seeing some uh, light areas and just putting those in, in uh, decisive strokes. And then I can go back and finesse edges. Starting to define that in the... Uh, beginning clip when I panned around to show you the location, that little island. It's really cool. It looks really nice in summer too with the, there's a nice reflection that comes down into the water and the water's really shallow right there. So I think in the summer I'll come back and do that, that area again to uh, study how you can see into water and then you have reflections on top of the water. So uh, be looking for that uh, this summer. Getting some hints on along the edge of the river with the snow. Now it's really starting to come together. Get some impact. Again, not pushing the paint around too much in, in certain uh, aspects like here. Want to kind of get that slabs of snow kind of effect. Dipping, it, uh, putting uh, more paint on from my palette frequently. Occasionally, I'll take some paint, and as it might mix a little bit with the color that I'm cutting around, that will be useful for maybe getting into some shadow of some areas because the white paint is a little dirty. So, you know, makes make certain conditions work for you rather than having to mix up a separate color. That will also expedite when you're plain air painting in terms of speed of, and capturing something quickly. Now here I am, I was trying to really kind of study some of that slabs of ice up that push up against the shore on, on rivers in the in the wintertime when the ice goes out. And complicated structures, some are very awkward in nature when you look at them in terms of the way they're um, designed. So trying to decide which ones you want to put in, I didn't want to take too much time with that, so I, I stopped on that and continued on to another part. But it's like a reminder for when I get back to the studio that that's what was going on. Now I start kind of just getting a little pieces of the tree on the right end. Some of the earth that's poking through near the base of the tree from the snow. See how I move around? You know, that's just the way I work, and I find it really works for me. And... Uh, I think, too, depending on some of your color mixtures, it can uh, intuitively give you some color harmony in different parts of the painting and connect different parts of the painting. Now here I go again with some chromatic, more rich colored paint, trying to shape some uh, bits of water that are sitting on top of ice as the ice is melting. And it's a nice uh, kind of uh, segue to lead in to the distance. And you can see I put little just dots of paint here and there. And sometimes you see how that gray of the canvas uh, toned panels really kind of 
assisting me in reaching my goals for what I want the painting to look like. So don't just uh, haphazardly slap paint on your panel or canvas. You know, be be aware of what's happening when you apply a stroke. You may want to keep it. You may want to adjust it. But uh, don't just think, oh, i got to fill in this area. And while I followed the uh, this area of the river uh, pretty faithfully, there were a few liberties I took just because design-wise it helped the painting. So uh, we don't have to be a slave to the scene using it for inspiration. As I remember one painter saying, I can't remember his name right now, but I'm not transcribing, you know, paint, painting a poem. And I feel that way also. My urbans tend to, my urban paintings tend to be a little more of a documentary sort of aspect, capturing a scene. But my landscapes are a little more in, uh, intuitive. Here I am starting to work on the slushiness that kind of gets to the edge of ice along a river, along a body of water. And this was really fun playing around with that transparent yellow oxide a bit too to get that greenish gray effect and you know nuancing the temperature, the value, all that good stuff. Barely applying pressure to put, because the paint around it's already wet, the white paint. You can get in there and noodle that as much as you want, but be careful. Don't uh don't kill the vitality. Kind of studying where I want to apply more little bits of color here and there. Start working a little bit of design aspects. Now this is where I mixed uh, transparent yellow oxide with white and it gives you this beautiful, nice color that is just really effective for, for what I'm doing. And I tend to want to have more naturalistic colors in my painting, so it really assists me in that. Reflecting some of that into the water. And you really don't have to mix the paint, so to speak, by brushing it together. If you have uh, very subtle value shifts, that can be your mixing. And it will give energy to the, to the surface of the painting. I'm really liking the right-hand hillside area there. That's a nice effect. Pulling in some uh, subtle reflections. Even though your eye may see a lot of information in a given form, it's up to us as artists to uh, pick and choose what we need to include in the painting to have it read to the viewer. I'm just going to let you uh, watch me paint for a little bit. Start breaking up so I don't uh, bore you with all my talking. And just let you watch me paint a little bit. Sometimes I learn the best by just watching someone do something. So I'll let you enjoy just the process for a few minutes. You can see how, again, I'm just using some strong strokes of paint. Sometimes I'll step back for a few seconds and study how the effect looks when laid in to the area where I put it. 
to see if it's integrated and gives the feeling of what I want to describe the form. Sometimes you don't want to overbrush the paint. Other times you want to cover an area a little bit in a little more smooth sort of transitionary type elements. So I used a mix of brushes with this too. I have some nice uh, synthetic rounds and some bristle brushes that are nice for kind of scumbling paint and can carry a load of paint. And that's kind of what I, I my go-to brushes for when I'm painting. Starting try, trying to define how that curves around that because the island is starting starting to rise up to that tree on the right. So trying to start working on defining that. Now I've jumped over, as you saw, over there on the left to go back and forth. Now comes the fun of painting this tree trunk. I've loaded up some paint on my brush. And I don't go too many strokes before I load up again. And it's all in how you have your brush in relationship to the surface of your painting support. You see how I'm holding it right now? That'll allow me to apply pressure and as I get towards the outer part of the limb I release some of the pressure and it just kind of gets wispy and blends in with the sky. If you need more enhancement in a certain area, fine. You can go back in after you're all done with your tree and find out areas where you need to reinforce some darkness using a finer brush. But use the same technique to try to blend it into uh, the previous limb, but tried I try to get 85% of how I want to look from uh, the first in initial pass, so I don't have to mess around with the tree too much. Too strong line, it's going to seem pasted on, obviously, so we want to avoid that. Here I'm getting some darks in there to uh, show the earth coming through a little bit because the tree push, is pushing up out of the earth. And also you notice that a lot, especially as the snow starting to melt and such, how around tree trunks there's uh, a lot of times no snow. And uh, that's a nice detail to pay attention to. Don't use it as a rule. Observe the scene you're, you're looking at for the particular characteristics that it is presenting to you. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice effect in this piece, having those bits of darks pop out against a little bit of the slab ice there by that tree on the right. But now I'm defining some of the limbs within the kind of scrubby mass that I created in the beginning of the painting. So when I pull out a few little more details, the overall impression to the viewer will be that all the tree limbs are there. It's almost like I want the painting to have a look of, if you're walking by and glance over at the scene, you would see what I'm painting as opposed to being able to study an uh, area within the painting, if that makes any sense. Because that's the most energetic one sometimes is just the, when you have the feeling of excitement when you glance over something and see an effect. Now I'm going to be pushing back and forth with tree limbs back and pulling some of the subtly pulling some of the sky back down into the dark and then pulling some of the dark 
a tree up into the sky. So this back and forth dialogue between the two parts. Now I'm trying to create the effect of just some wispy little twigs at the end of the bigger branches. And sometimes I'll go back in and cut sky color back around a few of them just to pull out a couple. But I want that sort of light, airy feel to those many tiny, thin limbs at the end of, uh, at the top of the tree. Getting a few darker tones, just a bit. Now I'm pulling out some light tones between tree trunks to pull out just a few of the tree trunks with a little bit darker value of the snow, just a hint. Really starting to give some dimension. So this painting's starting to wrap up here and stuff, and I just want to give you guys a heads up of, uh, got a cool thing that I'm doing now that I'm going to be presenting to you guys. I'm going to be doing a short little, I don't know, five minute video on it, letting you know what's, what's new with uh, what I'm trying to do with my art. And uh, so be looking for, forward to that. I'll be uh, probably trying to get that done within the next uh, three to four days. So be looking for that coming up. Really hope you enjoyed this video also. It seems a lot of people had a great interest in my last post. Uh, I was really happy with that painting also. And I'm just really trying to you know produce good content for you guys and, uh, and uh, give you some tips to uh, increase your, your painting knowledge and skill. And I hope... Uh, I hope you continue enjoying what I'm producing, and please comment on what you uh, think about the video. Let me know your thoughts. I want to create a dialogue between all of us. And I invite you to follow me on Facebook. Uh, you know, Feel free to contact me if you have any questions or you just want to touch base as an artist and uh, share your work and check out my work, and uh, I would appreciate that. So now we're going to uh, end the video here. And again, Till next time, take care. Bye. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for this plein air adventure. I think it's a pretty nice painting. I'm pretty happy with it. And I'll do a little analysis later when I get home and because uh, I got to pack up and be somewhere but I want to thank you for joining me if you're new to the channel thank you for joining me and I invite you to subscribe for everyone else thank you for continuing to uh, watch videos I appreciate it and I'd love to hear your comments take care bye okay now that I'm home we'll go over the analysis of the uh, painting uh, the one thing I do love about uh, this painting is the overall mood and tone of the piece. I'm super, super happy with that. And I think it really helps uh, using a limited palette to achieve that. You can obviously do it with an extended palette too, but if you want a quick response to a scene and not having too many colors to choose from, it help, it's helpful to experiment with the uh, limited palette. Uh, also, what I love is the composition. And they have these bits of darks over here, so it's not just one big light area. Now, for the time frame I'm usually working on these on site, I'm not there for three hours. Uh, on this site's piece, I'm never more, uh, I'm never working on a piece more than a couple hours. Occasionally some will be uh, more highly finished in terms of paint application. This is laid on in some strokes in certain parts. Other parts will need another coat, but I do have the bones of the piece from the scene to uh, continue working on the piece in studio if I so choose. Uh, it's important, uh, that's why in the video, sometimes I was dancing around getting color notes because of course with the sky on this day, it was changing quite a, a bit, not uh, 
not so much in terms of the flatness of the sky, but a few clouds in and out and some tones were changing here and there. So when an effect captured my attention that might have been heightened more, I would put that in. So now I have my value structure to continue working on it in studio. I'll, of course, uh, work on uh, finessing the tree a bit and things, uh, things like that. But overall, I'm really happy with the piece. And the biggest challenge in this piece was trying to study how the undersides of some of these slabs, some of it's just the earth poking through the snow, and other darks are going to be the underside of pieces of slabs of dirty ice that had, have washed up on as the ice is going out and pushes up on shore, that sort of thing. So sometimes we can get caught, too caught up in studying that on site and then we lose the overall effect of the piece. So I put in a few strokes to suggest and I'll repaint areas of this first before I work on those again and bring those into context with the rest of the piece so they don't overpower the scene because it would be very easy to do that. Some of these I might lighten a bit. So, but overall, very, very happy with it.